bonus with face, pat, and tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to the party. A show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, uh, I'm your boy, Ted. And I'm along with. Hey. All right. <laughs> it's the other third of the partners, your friendly neighborhood, Padawan here. And I'm along with. Pause, motherfucker. Yo, yo, yo. It's wide eyed, sober faced this week. What's going on? Be there for something special this week. Hey, so before we get into my topic, how y'all doing? I'm all right, man. Um, it's well, no, let me stop lying. Today was a bad day. The week has not been bad, but today was probably one of the worst days I've had in a minute. I can talk to y'all flat about it, but today was rough. But I'm here and yeah, we about to have a good show. So here we go. Uh, me, I'm copacetic. It's it's been an easy week so far. Uh, pretty much, it's my my one day off during the week. So I was running around all day uh, since freaking like five thirty this morning. On pretty much, but uh, yeah, I ain't tired yet. And I'm ready to go talk some shit. Season two, motherfuckers. Episode 55. Oh, oh yeah, I got I'll wait for that later. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants well, some of big pop? Who wants some of big doing up here this week? Um, I really can't complain too much. As I stated last podcast, um, December ain't never a good time for me. So um, slowly but surely trying to work through it. Um, progressively, it's going to get worse for me closer it gets to Christmas. Um, so I'm just trying to put on my happy face and be the best face I can be um, going forward to try to jump over all obstacles and hurdles and take everything in stride so I don't trip up, fall, and bust my ass. Um, but on to the topic. This week, face to screen. Um, we're talking about the top 10, top 10, top 10 best Christmas movies. Oh, should we got Top 10 of them things. Where's my Christmas hat? Okay. My movie got Just to on specify. It. Just to specify it. what a Christmas movie is. A Christmas movie does not have to be strictly just a holiday movie. A Christmas movie has to be a movie where the setting is Christmas time. That's a Christmas movie. Okay. So, number one, Die Hard. Best yeah, Christmas okay. movie I've seen. So okay. Yes. Die Hard. Yes, motherfucker. Yes. Die Hard is a Christmas. Yes. Solid. That's solid. Y'all heard that. That's Die Hard. I rock with that. I rock with that. Now, First number two, I'm going to bring back to something classical. Hmm? I'm going to bring back classical real quick for you. Number two, Home Alone. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. I did yeah. think about that one as a Christmas movie, but I'm rolling with you. Yeah, it's a no, Christmas no, movie yeah. and a lesson in self defense. Yeah, you beat the shit mm-hmm. out of them. Now, <laughs> now we're going to rock your world real quick. We're going to rock your world. Bad Santa at number three. Oh love my Bad God. Santa. I don't rock my world at all. I love that movie. I think that Yo, movie is fucking hilarious. That movie is I hilarious. Think that movie is hilarious. Yo, that little boy with that fucking advent calendar, yo. Oh my fucking God. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. All you right. Chocolate? Can I make you a sandwich? It's a Christmas movie. It's not a family movie. But you want to know what you want to know what my stepdad did with the whole family, <laughs> with my my devout Christian mother and <laughs> and my little brother and sister. Well, you know, they're not little, they you know, younger brother and sister. And, mm-hmm. and me. Play bad Santa, and you know what scene was going on? That ain't no fucking one. her in the ass. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. It the hell of an initiation to that shit, huh? <laughs> Check this out. And that was oh, that was the he's first time I seen it. <laughs> he's really I was like, oh, 
Yo, this is hilarious, but I can't really express how much I'm I'm laughing inside. (laughs) Well, no, before I'm gonna take it back classical for you. I'm gonna go a little cartoony. I'm not talking about the remake with Jim Carrey. Let's tell the classical Grinch who stole Christmas. Mm. Okay. Now that's solid. Now that's mm. super solid. The real Dr. Yeah. Seuss one. I don't now, care how old go. you are, you can rock with that. Now come on, I'm oh, still, yeah. you, what you got, six more of these left? I, I'm, I'm waiting on mine. I need to hear mine. I'm gonna give you another one. This is one of my personal favorites. Come on. A Christmas story. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Yes, oh, nigga. Oh, oh. Come on, nigga. You came through out, boy. Oh, oh, you didn't let me down this week, oh, face. Face, you came through with that one, boy. Oh, Ralphie, oh, Ralphie. Oh, you shoot your eye out. Yo, when that little boy fell the fuck over, yo. <laughs> yo. And I remember them suits because we used to have a wedding when we was little, yo. I remember them fucking uh, snow suits. Them shits was thick as hell. We'd be moving like the marshmallow man. Mm. I remember them shit. Now oh, my man. next one. They put. That's, that's my cool. next one. I had to slide this one in there. It's an all black cast majority with JB Smooth in this Christmas one. So I had to bring almost Christmas to the stage, man. What's that? JB Smooth, um, Monique, Danny Glover. Um, so now, Lathan, Omar, Epps, stars that they can. It's almost Christmas. I think I've seen that one before, <clears throat> but I'm pretty sure I've seen like every all black Christmas movie. Now, with this next one, we go back to the hood with this next one. Let's go Friday after next. Yeah, okay. Oh, yes. I can roll with you there. I yep. can roll with That's you there. Yep. <clears throat> yep, that checks the boxes. I yep. am a boy. Yep. Damn yep. It. yep. That is one of the, that mm-hmm. is one of, I remember the first time I saw that movie. I was riding around, yeah, so. breaking the 40. <laughs> and, and I don't know if you remember, dude, I think his name was David, but he looked older than everybody else, but he was our age. And he, he was like real swollen shit for no reason. From high school? Yeah. Oh yeah, Ross. Yes, I was riding around with him and we was listening to a fucking uh, rolling on repeat. Um, that song. Just drinking 40s and then we just pulled up at the movies and was loud as fuck through that whole movie sitting on the front row. <laughs> Faded. But that shit was so, that movie had me, like that movie was a whole, a whole vibe. Yeah, good, good pick there. Good pick there. Next one, we're going. Last holiday, starting Queen Latifah and LL Cool J. To me, it was a oh, good movie, fuck man. No, I, no, nope. this was a good movie. You lost he won't me. really start acting. You lost he me. He was a supporting actor, and he won't see in the movie that much. It was mostly Queen Latifah's starring role. Um, I think he was in all of the movie, all of a good fifteen minutes. So I like the movie. Me porpoise Not you lost me. On this one. Um, I like how they did it because instead of focusing on him as a star male character, they just played him off to the side and focused on all Queen Latifah and what she was going through and dealing with in the movie. I like the movie. It, it brings it gives you ups and downs, highs and lows, but it, it ends off with a good, real good twist. Um, so I, I, I dig it. I dig the I'm movie. Turn um, my face from the screen when he come on. I'm good. Is that the one with Com? No, 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 it's the one where she thought she was dying and she and she on oh, okay. her own body and went to that um resort, the ski resort that she always wanted to go to and ball the fuck out and then at the end found that she won't die. Spoiler. Well, it had some numbers <laughs> in that shit. You right. Now, next one. I don't know if y'all like it, and but it's an old but a goodie. goodie. Um we'll go Bill Murray and Scrooge. Oh, uh, that's classic. Oh, Scrooge. His fucking lips, huh? Elbow drop his fucking head. Still. He's still mad about LL. <laughs> <laughs> now, for number 10, <clears throat> I couldn't really decide. I got a new age one, and I got a true, true, true classic movie. Um, the the new age one, I'm going to go Best Man Holiday. What is that? Hmm. But the true classic... It's um, Best Man Holiday when they, it's the second one they all got up together and um, the football player wife ended up dying, but they all ran around him and holidays yeah. like that. 
Now, the last one, this I think this was the very first Christmas movie I ever watched, um, just as a kid. It was black and white. Um, it's a Wonderful Life. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember I also had to write a paper about that movie in one of my <laughs> classes. I remember that. Too quiet on that one because uh, I've tried to, that, to watch that movie over 30 times and I've never made it through maybe the first 15 minutes. So I don't know what, what happens. So I don't, I can't just, y'all win on that. Well, There's some, it's some white movie. people in it and they, they going through stuff that white yeah. people go through. Stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I can give it to you. I can give it to you. Um, basically, dude was at work. He was talking cash shit, wondering if, like, basically, what would life be without him and Christmas be without him and his family if he never was around and shit. Um, guardian angel or the Christmas spirit of Christmas or somebody popped up on his ass and when he was about to leave work and showed him what life is without his ass and if he would never exist and shit. So it's it, like it seemed like real movie fucking. When, uh, somebody was missing. Uh, something was like that. I think I remember that Family Matters episode, something like that. Okay, Angel. Yeah, every every they probably every, they every probably, sitcom, every kind of, series. Yeah, been, oh, yeah every series do, does the um. Oh. Uh, it's a wonderful life, shit. Um, it's a it's a it's a couple <clears throat> BET movies that it just did a spinoff of. Not a spinoff, but a, a a redo of that movie. Just with black characters, Jasmine. I got one of them. Like um, it's a wonderful life type shit. Um, she just, I think hers is more closer to the Scrooge version, but Scrooge and um, It's a Wonderful Life, they cross paths in some type of way. Um, it's a Wonderful Life ain't, it's about three different ghosts. It's got that one person um, showing them everything, but they're good movies, still good movies. But um, like I said, that's Faces. Faces screen this week, man. Top 10 best holiday movies. Next week, we never know what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about on the screen. I got a random mention for I, you. I got, I got a Suggestion. Let's go. Topic, but I'll tell you all. Let's go. All right. But uh, my random mention um, is Batman Returns. I was <laughs> it's gonna say it's that Saint Christmas. Christmas. I, Christmas. I, I dig it because <laughs> big big ass Christmas tree, big Christmas scene, always have all happen in December, snow, ice. But I just didn't like Batman Returns. That, that movie just won't hit me. Arnold Schwarzenegger fucked it up for me, I think. Lost. No, that was Disgusting. Batman. Um, no, I, he talking about the second uh, Michael Keaton one. The second oh, one, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. yeah, with Danny yeah, DeVito, got Penguin. You. Yeah, got you, got you. Penguin Catwoman. Yeah, got you, got you. Well, then, yeah, I fuck with that one. So yeah, put that one in there too. <laughs> My God. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not a traditional mm -hmm. one, but it's no, you good, like, you good now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Traditional only what is what in your tradition. So if that's what you watch. God damn it, it's traditional. Shit. Yeah, I can go with that. Podcast, that's all right with me. I can work with that. Die hard. Die hard is my shit. That's the number one. Die hard. Best holiday movie ever. I would never, I would never add the other two Batmans, uh, the Batman Forever and Batman Robin in any list. I'm you won't you won't have to worry about that for me. <laughs> that, that doesn't exist. But uh, mm -hmm. A Christmas Story is definitely my favorite Christmas movie of all time. I, I I could watch that movie like when they had them marathons on TBS. I used to watch them shits back to back to back to back. Oh to back to oh back to oh. Back to back to back. I would I would be to memorize the commercial order and everything by like the fifth one. Like it would be bad. So yeah, I love that. The, the one scene I avoid in that movie is when the dude was dumb enough to try to lick a light pole in the car. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh uh, man, it, it just it just seemed like uh, I know that hurt so bad. <laughs> Boy. Boy. But I wouldn't have done it in the first place, so I would never know. Yep, me too. <laughs> I learned at an early age from an ice cube that, oh, this shit cold, this stick to you. All right. Uh -huh. Let that warm up a little bit then, boss. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Cause and effect always helped me out with, with simple shit like that. I done did some dumb shit, but it won't like, I didn't know it was dumb when I did it. I just was like, oh, fuck it. Let me see what happens. Could, could go wrong, but what else? 
like when I had a dart fight with those uh, darts that you throw into the wall, to the little target, and we were throwing them at each other. <laughs> and I watched one fly and that bitch got caught in my chin. <laughs> it was like, oh. <laughs> and it was like weird because I ain't feel it. So I was like looking around like, the fuck did that shit hit? God damn it, because I'm looking forward to throw it back. And then I kept seeing this little blue thing. And I was like, oh shit, that's the, that's the dart. I was like, oh fuck, mama, mama. I was like, maybe, I was like, maybe 11. Cause it was the first year I was over and uh, I had just moved to going to the, the middle school where I met Face Mob and Dot. But yeah, it was, uh, yeah, that was pretty stupid. But uh, I digress. But, um, Speaking of stupid, we got to talk about LL Cool J one more time this show, guys. Now, this, this is the segue he <laughs> <laughs> Now, if y'all been following the show for a while now, y'all know we did uh, the top MCs uh, after 2000. We also have started the top MCs before 2000 list. So we made the list already. Uh, you can go back, and I believe it's episode 53 or 54. No, episode 54. Um, and you can see where we made the list. But now we are going to, we have it bracketed. We have it seated. And we are about to get off into this shit. We got the top MCs before 2000 tournament. It's coming live and direct to you. Everybody going to see it on the screen. And, uh, let's get off into the shiznits, man. Um, how do y'all feel about this side of the bracket? Now, this is a two-sided bracket, so there's also a whole nother side. We had that many people on the list this time, which was which I think is great. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely feeling that vibe, but... Uh, this is what we got. Let me take us to the other side here. Let me see how do I do this. Hold on, I just gotta go smaller. Okay. I don't wanna do that oh yeah. See some people. Some, some people get out of here early. Some of them are gonna be tough. Yeah, and this the other side. So um, I'm thinking we got to do the round one. We're gonna do this just like we did it last time. So for all of y'all that missed the first tournament we had for the top MCs after 2000, let me break down the rules here. We have three criteria that determines an MC. Marketability, meaning you can be sold, you can make money, you can, your stage show makes money, your record sale, you, you're marketable on a, a high level, et cetera. Lyricism, you can put words together in a creative way, more creative than the average human being, and you do it at a high enough level where your peers, you are better than them. And then, uh, stage presence, your MC ability, how you perform your songs, how you perform your lyrics in a way to make people feel what you're saying. How dope is your stage show? Do you actually stand up there like a dead fish or are you actually up there giving it your all and making, bringing people into your performance? Are you uh, uh, captivating when you're performing your lyrics? So with those three criteria, we put together a list of MCs. You can see the tournament information there on the screen. Let me see if I can make it into the just tournament screen. Let's get you out of here. Bottom. Yes, sir. So we got two sides to it. On the first side, we got Eminem as a number one seed. Um, I did this one. I put Eminem as a number one seed. Um, I'm going to give y'all full disclosure for as far, and I did so basically because I felt like so many people would vote for him. It just made sense. Um, I did the same thing with Jay-Z on the other side of the bracket. Um, he's the top seed over there. So they both have an opening round by, so they won't be voted on this week. But next week when the pod squad gets involved, oh, it's on like next time. All right, so we got in the first uh, side of the bracket, we got Rakim versus Big Daddy Kane, Lil Wayne versus Busta Rhymes, DMX versus MC Ham. <laughs> <laughs> Rizzo versus Slick Rick, Ghostface Killer versus LL Cool J, Nas versus The Notorious B.I.G., and MC Light versus E40. Now, everything but the number one seeds 
were at random. So I had no idea we were going to get uh, DMX versus MC Hammer, but for some reason, that's hilarious to me. All right, on the other side of the bracket, we got Jay-Z as the number one seed over here, so he's already got the first round back. First round that we're going to be voting on this evening. Red Man versus Queen Latifah. KRS-One versus Big Pun. Tupac versus Cameron. Ice Cube versus Method Man. Common versus Mace. Scarface versus Snoop Dogg. Big L versus Cool G Rap. Now, the way the votes work is best two out of three votes moves that person on to the next round. If there is a tie, meaning one person decided it was a draw and two others had differing votes, we will send it to a pod squad vote over the next week, and the winner of that vote will be automatically moved on to the next round, at which point we will begin the open round voting. And I'll explain the rules for those later. But the way we're going to vote, we're going to basically rate them or compare them on each of the three categories. And then based on who wins two out of three of those is usually who we pick. Now, there's been some curveballs in there along the way sometimes, so you never really know where it's going to go. And sometimes people start off kind of strong about their person, but then they kind of ramp it up and put their foot down. So uh, you never know where it's going to go. But what side of the bracket do y'all want to start off? It don't matter. Yeah, we can go with the left side, yeah. Okay, we're going to the Eminem side of the bracket. And we got Rakim versus Big Daddy K. Um, yeah, let's get it popping. Uh, who? Anybody want to go first, or should I kick us off here? Kick, kick us off, man. This is tough. Ah, oh, man. Okay, now this one right here. Um, I didn't expect them two to be together, or at least not so fast. So I really. Okay. I'm going to start off by saying if I go to straight lyricism, so let me take it to the probably the, 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 the one I can go to easily. I'm going to get that to Rock Hill. Um, I feel like he kind of paid the way for Big Daddy Kane and the people that came after him like that. Um, he set the standard for his era um, as far as lyricism goes. And I feel like he was more versatile than Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane was very great at what he did. Um, he had a super dope cadence. Um, like his flows were impeccable, but Rakim had the flow. He could go deep. He could go more. Uh, I'm gonna whoop your ass. He could go to the spiritual. He could go to the 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 smooth shit. Like whatever way you wanted to take it, he could he could rock to it. And I think he really did set a precedent for a lot of rappers after him. So I'm gonna give the lyricism to Rakim. Um, if I go to MC and ability. I'm going to actually get that to Big Daddy Kane. I'm going to feel like if they're just in a room spitting on a mic like in some Funk Master Flex type shit, I feel like you might have an argument. But when you're talking about a stage show, there's it, it's not many people that were able to like keep up a flow like that, be spitting as hard as he was, and be dancing and doing splits and shit like Big Daddy Kane used to do. So like, to me, like it, it is, he, he's one of the best stage performers hip hop has seen. So I'm definitely going to get uh MC and ability to Big Daddy Kane. Um, and then I'm gonna take it to marketability, money making. I'm gonna pull an upset here, y'all. Um, get it to Big Daddy Kane. Um, I feel like Rock Hill was definitely recognized more by his peers, but on some straight record selling and straight stage show selling. I feel like Big Daddy Kane was and still is a lot more of a uh, a money maker, a money generator um, over the years. So I'm going to Big Daddy Kane. So I got Big Daddy Kane. Two, two, one. Clean. I'm going to go Kane. Two, one. I'm going to go Kane. Two, one as well. I dropped the lyricism to Rock Kim. Everything else falls to Kane for me. Kane. Bang, 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 bang. Kane and more movies than on Rock Kim. Oh, I need my easy button. button. That was easy. the name recognition. Because you got to act the role, but I don't think I Kim Nang is gonna get him in the acting acting position. So I'm gonna just go as far as notoriety and marketability. That's automatic. Kane, like I said, his name gets him in more room than Rakim do as far as 
worldwide and different avenues of um, stream, revenue streams. Stage performance, um, I'm gonna see Rock Kim gonna rock the mic, but Daddy Kane gonna rock the show. I like that. Big, big facts. Man, this is better this one. Is, still give your vote, man. You know. This is a hard one, man. This is a hard one because to me, I feel like they're equal to me. But lyricism, I give it to Rock Him. Like I pretty much agree with all of y'all, like with this in, in general. And then so, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is the age of rap that I grew up with, pretty much. So then I have to like, all right, this I'm gonna put my personal biases in it. Pretty much. So which one of those rappers do I have I listened to more on my own personal? And I would say Rock right. Kim. So, but here's right. the other thing. Here's the other thing. Who has been out all the way up till now? Currently, that's Big Daddy Kane. I'm gonna give it a Kane. Cause he still he's currently has just showed in the verses that he can still rock a crowd. Big time. Big time. Oof. Next week. But if I was to have to go off my own <laughs> personal bias, I'll probably go with Rock Kim. But it's Kane. It's Kane. Okay. Hey, okay. okay. well, Big Daddy Kane got knocked out in the first round. We all <clears throat> got our first 30 ball of the oh night. And in the next part of the bracket, we got Lil Wayne. Versus Buster Ryan. Oh my God, this is what? This is torture. Let me take this, Let me take this one. Um, lyrically, I'm gonna go Wayne. Um, from the progression of being a, a preteen to a grown ass man, we've seen his lyrics go from I can rap a whole album with not cursing and still be a hard street album, so I can give you everything off the top of the dome, and it's gonna be a a, a worldwide seller album as well. Um, lyricism, I'm gonna give it to Wayne. Um, marketability, that's hard. Uh, pause. That's a difficult question when it comes to these two artists. Um, we both know Bust have been in it for decades and decades and decades. So has Wayne. Both name rings, rings bells internationally, regardless of where you go, where they go, they're gonna be recognized as who they are. Um, Bust the Rhymes may not be recognized as much without the head, but he still be recognized as Bust the Rhymes when he opens his mouth and speak. Um, just on, I'm, I'm gonna do personal preference. I would go Wayne as far as notoriety and marketability. Um, I see his face in more a different avenues, his, his name in different avenues, and I, I see Buster Rhymes. Um, Buster being more uh, 90s, early 2000, earlier, early 2000s. I don't see that change his style so much to make it more prevalent to the new, the newer crowd as picking up the hip hop music and the to be able to cross genres like Wayne has and continue to. Um, Wayne sets precedence and you have Wayne copycats. Um, there have been a few people to attempt to copy Buster, but you don't have the young thug who's basically uh, another Wayne to me. You feel me? So, I mean, you have Wayne copycats who made money because of their Wayne copycatting. So I'm gonna say Wayne and the marketability. Um, stage presence, stage show, I'm sorry, I got to give the Buster. You ain't gonna get a show from Wayne like I'm gonna go, you go get from Buster. Buster is animated in everything he does. He's animated in his videos, he's animated in his clothing lines, animated in his voice, animated in everything. So when you take that live animation and put it on stage, it just draws that natural reaction from the crowd and they just get into the show more. Um, so sad to say, but Buster, you out of here two to one. Um, marketability and lyricism go to Wayne. Wayne on the board. Pat, you want to go up or you want to anchor it? Um, I don't go up. I don't go up. Okay. All right. I always go to lyricism first, so that's the easiest thing to go to. Whatever. There is a case to be made in this situation because most general hip-hop heads is going to go to Busta first, but if I was to go down to Bar for bar punchline because they're traditionalists they'll go to buster first plus those traditionalists always have something against southern rappers anyway 
pretty much. But bar for bar, I've heard a lot more straight up just punchline bars from Wayne. Like they just hit you nonstop, nonstop. Um, marketability. Um, with that, I feel like both of them are just incredibly marketable, but then you just got to go on to achievements pretty much or whatever. And, oh man, it's, it's kind of close here. I'm going to skip that. Let's go to stage presence. I'm going to give that to Buster anyway, pretty much. Man, this is a hard <laughs> pause. This is a hard decision here. I'm going to go with my bias. Um, Because I feel like he's going to get overturned anyway. I'm going to go with Buster. I'm going to go with Buster. Okay. So y'all going to force me to break a fucking tie this early. All right. Um, I'm going to go to stage. Part. I'm going to say Buster gets that. Um, Buster probably one of the liveest performers, period. Um, Hip hop has ever seen. Like, Dancing, yelling, wilding, getting the crowd hype. Make like he 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 delivers. Um, so I'm gonna give him that. Um, lyricism. I'm a I'm a roll with uh, Faith said with that. I definitely agree that like Wayne has shown me more of a versatile body of work. Um, just because he's been doing it over more of his life, like his lifespan as opposed to being an adult the whole time. You got different phases away. So I feel like um, I've definitely seen the progression. He's been excellent at each level. Like he was never a slouch, even when he was rapping with grapes back in the day. So um, definitely give lyricism the way. Um, the marketability one is a tough one for me um, mm -hmm. because they both are very marketable. I am going to say Buster Rhymes is more marketable. And it has probably made more straight money off of his actual talent. Not like money off of other artists, et cetera, but like money off of your straight talent, not your label money and all that. I would say Buster has probably made more because he's We've included it in another one, so I got to stick with it. I'm, I'm going to keep the same energy. The nigga's a fucking actor, too. So he's been in movies, which means there's people overseas that might not even listen to hip-hop, but they might have seen the movie Halloween, H2O or some shit. Yeah, they might have seen High Alert, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I feel like he's more apt to be seen in something or have somebody who's pushing something to get him to come in than they would Wayne. Wayne's also a recluse, which also stunts his marketability because he's often not seen anywhere. So, you know. Um, but yeah, man. Ah, oh, that's tough. You gotta stick to logic though, man. Buster wins. Hey, I'm you know what I meant to add to about Buster? And this was the one thing that that just made me say, I'm just gonna go with Buster. To this day, no one has accepted his challenge for versus to this day now now he got a lot of like he got one album man <clears throat> I think it's station level event where i i can listen to that album front to back without no skips that's it like when you got albums like that that mean you got like you can play just that album and leave the rest of your catalog out and you damn near 20 songs right there especially you know back then they used to make them 18 16 uh mm -hmm. cut that's uh, no, i think that's like 21 yeah. tracks then three of them might be skips, but you still got 18 songs. And you know, them songs be like four, five minutes. 343. But I definitely agree there. Um, well, Buster has scored with some, I'm probably gonna call an upset, but <clears throat> moving on. DMX versus MC Ham. Um that's what I'm gonna say. Everything with marketability go to DMX. I ain't about to waste my 
waste my, my, my time with the nonsense and all that bullshit. Um, one of y'all can get it. One of y'all can get it. Um, whenever face come off mute, he can go or uh, Pat. I got it. I got you. <laughs> so, 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 so. Lyricism hand down, that goes to DMX. But when it comes to marketability and stage performance, it gets a little bit more of a tie. Um, marketability, worldwide DMX is so 74 million. And I think the last time I checked, MC Hammer was at 50 something million. So not that far off, but still DMX adds his amount in the worldwide album sales. Mm. Um, is that how to make a real X? Hmm? I said, let's go X. Yeah, 74 million, yeah. Big, big numbers, big numbers. Um, let's look at the height of their career. Um, at the height of their career, their marketability was, I'll say X's marketability got better the further his career went on and the further MC Hammer career went on, his marketability went down. Their correlations and their plateaus went total opposites as their career moved on further. Um, Hammer were just bad business decisions and the shit he was doing. DMX, he was putting himself around the right people and just that voice and his ability to make money got him in different places. Um, DMX, also an actor. MC Hammer has a serial in the cartoon. Um, I credit MC Hammer for giving pop, bringing hip hop to the pop scene. Um, he is the first credit rap artist to be considered pop in that, in that category. So he opened that door. Um, for a lot of people to flood in. Uh, stage presence, ain't nobody gonna make you cry like DMX and they make you get rattled like DMX. Um, but ain't nobody gonna make you dance like Hammer either at the Hammer show. Um, Hammer would give his all in the performance. He was known for dancing, he was known for having. Hammer had everybody in the country wearing Hammer pants, genie pants mm -hmm. in the height of his days. He, he changed the fashion game with his baggy ass pants and everybody was doing that side to side silly ass Hammer dance. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna go DMX because he was that he was he went he was that lyricism he was that lyricism that that lyricism edged MC Hammer out. If MC Hammer would have had better lyrics, it would have been a tougher challenge for him. But he got stage presence. I get stage presence hand down to MC Hammer. Um, marketability, I say that's a tie uh, because of what both people have done is basically even to me what they have achieved. Um, I say, like I said, X did more because his career started to go, go better the later he he went and he got a little resur <laughs> resurgence right before he died. You know I mean? He got that extra boost of bringing him out. Um, MC Hammer never had that, even though he's still alive. And he ain't gonna have that. Um, so, X get it for me. <clears throat> oh, all right. Too legit. Too legit to quit. No, you ain't. Hey, you got your ass up out of here. Uh, 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 that dash your ass up out of here. Go sell some KFC. Fresh chicken and lettuce. Somebody else, though. It might have won. Might have. Yeah. Um, I if would say one person, I know he MC Hammer has a cartoon. I don't care. DMX. All right, next one. <laughs> For all you Hammer fans out there, uh, I don't care. Um, next one, hey, RZA hey. versus Slick Rick. Who versus Slick Rick? RZA. RZA. Oh, shit. Um, go ahead. Prosper, y'all can hate me, get mad, whatever. I'm going to just, I ain't even going to explain shit. Hands down, I'm going to go with RZA. I'm going for Bobby Digital. Bobby Digital. I listened to that whole album, Bobby. I don't know how many times, thanks to my brother. Bobby my brother, that Digital. tape, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, all right. Y'all, all right, okay. I'm, I'm giving, I'm, I'm adjusting for inflation here. I ain't gonna front. But even his shit, more in the late 90s, 2000s, whatever. I'm rocking with. Um, lyricism, I'm going to give it to Slick Rick. 
I ain't half the time I ain't know what the fuck Rizzo was talking about. I ain't <laughs> like I, I know there was that you know that their own slang, but when you the only one that understand it, I don't give a fuck as much. I ain't the front. Um, I think that's why Method Man was always my favorite because he would actually say like shit that I understood. Um, <laughs> him and Rayquan, but uh, you know sometimes uh, Rizzo would go off into that straight Shaolin talking. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? So uh, I'm gonna get at the slick Rick. That's the art of storytelling right there, you know. Uh, yeah, man, he's a fucking legend to me. I, I love slick Rick shit. So I'm, I'm gonna roll with uh, slick Rick on the lyricism, uh, the stage presence. I'm gonna definitely get a slick Rick as well. RZA is not the stage performer of the Wu Tang. There's a lot of Wu Tang members that can rock the fuck out of a crowd, but RZA ain't ain't him. So I'm gonna get at the slick Rick too, and then the marketability. I would probably. I would give it a Slick Rick. I feel like Slick Rick, I don't know what the record sales would say, but I would say over the stage performances, over the, the course of their careers, more people would probably identify who Slick Rick is. That would be my opinion. Across more generations as well. Like there's people's grandmothers who would be like, Slick Rick, Slick Rick. Oh, I remember him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. For, uh, okay, I'm sorry. I don't know what accent that was, but whoever that was, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, but anyway, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. I don't even know why I'm still talking. Slick Rick, man. Slick Rick, man. Fight me. Well, up next is a guy that got a Wu Tang shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what you're about to go with it. Boom, that pack. You must, you must, like, you can't really, though, because at the same time, I'm also a hip-hop head, and Slick Rick is a legend in, as far as a hip-hop head, hip-hop heads go. Um, it's true. It's true. Storytelling, all of that. You know, but with this list, I'm probably going to go with my all-around bias. So, Boy, you the one with your bias on all of them. Yep. <laughs> lyricism um I'm gonna be honest I'm gonna actually I can't really say that yeah you are I can't I can't yeah you can okay what else you got to say because right now you're stalling say yeah all right stage say presence I'm shit. gonna give stage stage presence I'm giving that to Slick Rick okay what up I'm giving that to Slick Rick. Because you say that shit better. I yeah. roll, I roll with the one eyed man. You heard me. You he he me. just got a legendary show by himself. By himself, he has a legendary show. By his oh, goddamn self, for real. By himself. Um marketing. Mm. I'm giving that to Rizza mm. because Wu Tang is a stable. And if it wasn't for the Rizza, it wouldn't be a stable. Like he's a key okay, part. So you're of giving him like success of the group as well. Like you're yeah, trying, okay. yeah. Because he's that, also in movies. Okay, movie. okay. So I gotta give it to him. That's a precedent being set here, Pod Squad. Pay attention. Slick Rick has awesome stories. But I am a woo head, so I know the crazy shit that they actually talking about. <laughs> oh, whatever. So I tend to understand what the heck RZA says. I will say he says some weird shit from time to time. But in Reunited, he said, um, and I, what did he say? Said, with no hands and feet to complete us. Like, like feed us and we return like Jesus when the whole world needs us. The way he said it, he said it like that. Then he said, I crack your skull without penetrating your skin. He just has a way. He Sometimes he gets lost, but sometimes that's extra science, 5% of stuff, it gets me. May not get anybody else, but it gets me. So, woo bias, Rizzo. I'm picking Rizzo. Get your ass up out of here, Slick Rick. Uh, it's broken. Now, now the pod squad might go for Slick Rick. So, oh, Slick Rick gone. Nobody, they both get your ass out of here, Slick. Well, 
I gotta do this for formalities. Get out of here, Slick Rick. I'm gonna vote for Ghostface Killer. <laughs> Against who? LL Cool J. <laughs> Y'all can discuss amongst yourselves. <laughs> I'm gonna give LL his 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 just due on lyricism. Um, I believe it's close somewhat, but go face ghost face ain't ain't LL man. He's LL for a reason. Um, longevity, flow. I don't know how many albums he motherfucking got, or how many record sales he got, but lyricism is there. Marketability. Um, He's a fucking movie star and a rapper. He's known just as much for his movies as he is his lyrical prowess and rap. I mean, that's about even. Ghostface is Ghostface. I mean, the names ring bell because there's no other Ghostface. You can say Ghostface and everybody know you're talking about killer. They don't think you're talking about the cartoon. So, um, yeah. marketability, I don't know on that one. Uh, kind of tough. They both known worldwide, but as far as the ability to make money, I believe you can put LL on some other shit that you couldn't put Ghostface on because LL is on um, with MTV or something with that damn game show. Oh, not not MTV. Somewhere where we're we're gonna, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, you got um, the they lip sync, the lip sync battle. He got that shit uh-huh. going on. Um, countless, countless movies, countless albums. Um, he would be doing some more weird stuff. shit with some lips. Shit. Now, stage presence um, and show. Uh, I don't know. I don't know really. Um, I really don't see any ghost face solo performances. I always see him either with the whole clan or with Ray Kwan. So I really don't know what he alone could do and bring as far as what he could do for a crowd. Because most shows that I've seen him in has something to do with either the whole group. So he's either on stage by himself after the whole groups come or at some dynamic like that. Um, L. L. is once again, he's been doing it for decades by himself. He he can get on stage with people and do it, but he's never been in a group, so he's always had to stand on his own. Um, Ghostface came out with the group and got his notoriety with the group and then branched out more on his own and did his solo thing. Um, love Wu Tang to death. Hate to give it to the man, but I think L. L. with Ghostface. Okay. Well, it's all right. It's all right if you hate to give it to LL because I'm not going to give it to him and I, <laughs> anyway. But let me explain why. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Let me party over here. Let me explain why. Ding Ghostface, which is dead, which is dead, which is dead. Ghostface and LL are like almost the same person, just from different boroughs. Almost like Ghostface can make the same type of songs that LL can make, but they're not gonna be poppy, you know. I tell you, um, what, LL ain't got no all that I got is you. That's all exactly. Ghostface can give you feels. He'll 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 have you go through everything that he's been through as a childhood. He'll have you reflecting over the things that you went through as a child. You know, All like that I got is you. you know, like he'll put you he, he's so he's at least put you through me. every emotion in his music some type of way. Oh, oh. LL Cool J is the prototype for all the, the, the corny rap um plants that's in here. You know, he, he was bow wow before bow wow. This nigga sad. Look at him. Don't make no sense. See, that's the effect that Ghostface has. You ain't gonna get that from no LL Cool J song. No. All he got is mama, mama say knock you out. That's it. That's it. That's it. And it, and, and you put that up against any one of Ghostface Killers rhymes. <laughs> that's it. Um I, I really oh, don't L uh, Cool J. I, I like, but I do fuck with his achievements pretty much. Like, 
hands down, you're right. He he is marketable or whatever. Um, he just got the the he just got an award with Jay Z the the for the um rock heart of all. Uh, what is that shit called? The Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Just got that. He keeps getting achievements and stuff like that. But I feel like they just do that because it's because of hip hop politics or whatever. Like I can't really say I can say a LL Cool J song, but I can't give you like a rhyme and feel confident in that rhyme bragging about it with my friends but i could probably say a ghost face killer rhyme and be like you know what i'm saying so oh no and that and i just think he just do corny stuff from time to time so we're gonna give it a ghost face killer mm-hmm. and ghost face! This you said ll my- was the proto ll set a precedent for all these rappers coming out with rapping to the ladies he was the first one rapping to girls and then yeah. everyone followed suit yeah. So you're right. Still another president. I'm gonna give his man his credit. I'm gonna go by the criteria regardless of how much I dislike him personally. I ain't gonna give him the Joe Button treatment. I'm gonna do a fetish time. So I I, yeah. I am because really I don't want to listen to a nigga serenading me. <laughs> <laughs> go out. Treating this shit like a court of law. If the president has been set, a hey, judge recognize this shit. This is not you don't want to borrow that. Here. You want to idolize. No, he didn't want to borrow that. I crush it like a jelly bean. A good day. Pull your pants leg down, sir. Put your Four, three, two, down. one. March your ass on up out of here. And he swear that he swear his Ooh, rhyme on four, that. three, two, one. Want to get voted out. Killed cannabis, and, and, and cannabis said, <laughs> "I snatch your crown with your head still attached to it." Watch this. And be all upset when they feel it. Guess what? Talk about it in the comments. With enough people that vote against me, I may reconsider. But don't just come in here. Oh, you crazy. State your claim. They start the same three criteria. You give us your facts and I'll talk about it. I'll see you on the next podcast. I told y'all I'm all biased on this one. LL's a legend, but Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck. <laughs> this one might be tough for people, and this gonna upset more people. So. Yeah, I'll hey, go first. This hey, gonna be hip, tough. Hot, hey, the poppers, get mad. Holy. Get ready to get mad. You gonna get real mad. Holy. Hey, I'm gonna get this to, and I don't even really care for him that much, but I do recognize. I'm gonna get this to Nas on marketability. I'm gonna give it to Nas. Nas over who? Notorious. Notorious. Big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, off body oh, yeah. work, I don't fuck with Nas. I'm a I don't fuck with Big that much. Uh, <laughs> off of lyricism, I'm gonna give it to Nas. I got more to go off of. He, he wild. He had more chances to wow me straight up. Um, if Big had been alive longer, maybe it, it's a bigger argument for me personally. But off lyricism, like I would say, they're about a wash. But Nas has a bigger body of work, and he's had more chances to wow me, so I have more. <laughs> Holdable from Nas than I do big. Um, stage presence, I'm gonna get it to big. Um, I feel like no matter what he was doing, big could be talking about a ping pong game and could captivate the fuck out of you. He had he was one of them ones that had the glow. Um, so I'm gonna definitely give him his, his flowers. Uh, so I'm gonna get that to big. Um, yeah. So what we got? Marketability. Nas, Nas. Um, you done? I am done, my friend. I don't fuck with me. I want to. So what? Are you up enough? Niggas be mad. I don't two, give, give two shits. I'm a soft baby, baby. Um, Big head with two, two and a half albums. The fuck? How's he the greatest? Fuck. We had a handful of songs. Um, Nas. Nas. I just don't fuck with Nas. I, I, he got like five songs I like. Just don't fuck with him. So on this one, 
I'm gonna give it to the person who has more stuff for me to go off of. So I'm gonna go off Nas because his body of work, um, his his amount of stage, his stage performances and stage presence, and the amount of time he's been alive to be marketable. Um, it's not big, so he's not around. But as far as his body of work, his continuous legacy, you know, I don't think bringing in the revenue like Nas, and, and if you are, it's because of how your music is being used. So I, I would attribute attribute that to Puffy not Biggie. Um, so I'm going to go Nas. We really don't fuck with neither one of them, but I got to get to somebody. Can't say neither. So, Nas. <laughs> Pat, you want to uh, still stake your claim? Um, yeah. I'm the only... This is my claim. I'm the only Nas fan in the pot. This is true. I'm, I'm the only singular Nas fan. I, but I am and in high school, especially because he had a pair, he had a feral um, mask up there. Pretty much, uh, I feel like he has more stories. I can get more feels as as far as like emotion, emotional rise out of his stories or whatever. And then big, big, he makes me want to just rap. He, he just makes me want to just rap punchlines. Um, maybe sell crack and go oh. to the club and spill champagne on bitches. Oh. That's what I, mean, I don't even know that many crazy punchlines from Big. That's what I feel like. I punch. feel like at the time for bit the punchlines that he had were bit were like crazy because that no one has ever just said it and recorded it just yet. Line? But I feel like eventually somebody would have probably line? ended. Hmm? What's his punchline? Um, let's see. What's what? It's more. It's not more. It's more like his like not punchlines. I would say more like his cadences and just flow, mostly. I will, I will give you that. Give. I'll give it that. But I would say marketing, uh, stage presence. I would give it to. Big lyricism, I feel like I give it more to Nas, but not just because he has more to go by, but he, Nas talks about everything. Like, I would say more than Big has, he talks about all kinds of stuff or whatever. So, and I'm just a devout Nas fan, so I give it to Nas. <laughs> You do realize you gave Notorious uh, two of the categories, but still. <laughs> I told you my biases. So I'm my glad bias, the Pod Squad is about to get involved in the next round. because <laughs> My, my biases funny. override. I ain't mad at you. I mean, you had already, you had already got outvoted, but it was, that's just funny. My biases outvote all logic on this, man. It's all, this is how my dopamines felt at the time. Pretty much. Fuck both of them niggas. Put your dopamine on MC Light versus E40. I don't really got any dopamines for either one of them, to tell you the truth. MC Light and who? E40. E40. Oh man, 40 40, man. Sprinkle me, baby. Sprinkle me, baby. Sprinkle me, baby. Sprinkle me, baby. Yeah, we will wobble, man. What did he belong? I'm going to say, let's go E-40 with the lyrics, man. I'm going to go E-40 with the lyrics. Um, creates his own language, man. And uses it as he wants. And everyone goes with the suit. They follow suit and they understand what the fuck he mean or they're going to get to understand what he mean. And that's what it is. E-40, lyrically. Um, I'm not saying uh, MC Light is no slouch, but sprinkle me, baby. Sprinkle me, baby. Um, sprinkle me, baby. Um, marketability. E40 is in some a lot of avenues, um, but MC Light is in a lot of avenues too. Um, E40 continues to be in some avenues that I don't think he'll be in. And MC Light pops up some places every now and then too. Um, I think MC Light will get him would be a good actress in certain roles due to her voice and her vocal inflection. But I feel like she doesn't get, I don't know if she goes for acting roles, I don't know, but I feel like she would not get it 
also because of her voice and her vocal inflection brings her out more masculine and more she tough. She's doing that and, show and, and, with and, the like, uh, girl from Smart Guy. Yeah. Um, so, mm, stage present, I'm going to get to E-40, man. I, feel like, I, I really believe that E-40 can move a crowd better than MC Light. I feel like a lot of more females will move to MC Light, but I also feel like they, she don't have no, I can I can release myself type female music. I can do my love female. I don't believe she got that for them. So I believe over there with that get hyphy shit. I believe they gonna rock with that. So I'm gonna Did get the E for you. You can't release yourself and do your. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. She can't. They can't do that to her shit. I'm speaking on baby hand. I ain't speaking for myself. I ain't got to be that to release. So. Boy, they can't do that. Dirty. That is the funny shit. They so I mean, so like, I feel like the more people can get down to E40 music, especially in the nowadays. Like, even when he first came out to now, I mean, his fan base has grown. But I feel like MC Light fan base is as far as her music has become as stagnant. She may have more fans from other things she does, but I feel like E40, his fan base continues to grow. So I'm going to get a 40 40, man. 40 water on the board. Pat, you got it or you want me to get it first? Oh. Um, uh, you can go ahead and get it, man. All right. All right. Um, I'm gonna go to lyricism first. I'm gonna give it to 40 Water. Um he got way more albums. He's lyrically proficient to me. I understand his lingo and he makes up a lot of the lingo that people use nationwide. So I'm definitely gonna give it to 40 Water. And then worldwide by default. Um <laughs> As far as marketability, this is where it gets tough because MC Light has been an actor. She's been in a TV, like a syndicated TV show. So I don't know how many people watch that show. I would venture to say that 40 has made more money off of stage shows over the years just because he's been more prominent in the public eye. Um, and he's had more hit records over the years than MC Light. Um, and he also, you know, he's big in the liquor game. So he does make a lot of money off of his wine and his you know, his hood drinks and stuff. So he's definitely making money off that too. So I would venture to say marketability wise, E40. So I'm going to just stop there. I ain't going to do MC Light like that. Um, I can go to stage present because I would give it to her actually. But I mean, 2 1, E40. Over there. All right. So I'm next. Okay. I'm um, be honest with y'all. Uh, I respect both of them. Um, for everything that they've done uh, to contribute to hip hop. I have no bias for any of them, but I can't say that I really listen to any of them um, enough to make an actual opinion. I would say probably more E40 because he started having prominence when in a lot more as far as the college years and stuff like that. So I'm going to flip a coin. Heads. MC Light tells E40. Oh, we're going to lose even more subscribers than we already lost. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Never mind. Oh, okay. the, the quarter fell back there or whatever. So I'm going to just pick E40. <laughs> oh, hell no. The quarter fell back there so well. <laughs> Let's go for E40. What the fuck, yo? That is hilarious. I might um, need it, cool. All right, so that's the first half of the first round. Um, I'm looking at the rollie, it's about that time, so I'm gonna slow it down one more and give him a ride. And in the meantime, and in the meanwhile, we're gonna say the other half for next week, the style. So, um, I think we'll say the other half for next week, just due to time purposes, uh, make sure that we uh, don't go over time as far as our recording time. But that also gives you guys a chance to argue with us and fuss at us, because that means the first round has not been set yet. So if you got an argument, put it down in the comments. Let us know on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever you follow us on, Anchor. Let y'all know Leave there's us a one voice thing. message. Um, shout out to Sean for leaving us a voice message. Uh, this past week. Thank you for the anniversary love, man. That was, that was big love, bro. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to leave a voice message, just listen to us on anchor.fm and you can anchor.fm, right baby. That we can add to the podcast. So um, yeah, 
Um, but yeah, let us know how you feel about how we're doing so far with this list. Trust me, I know y'all gonna have some shit to talk. So talk that shit. Um, E40. And um, E40. yeah, round two of round one will be coming next week. So talk that shit in the comments. Let us know how we did. If you got an argument, let us know. We might change our mind. And we'll see y'all next week for that. And then the me I'm not. in between time, like I told y'all, man, my watch was telling me that it's about that. Looking at my role, it's about that time. Is it time to roll up? Oh no, I know what y'all what what time. Pache, Pache. Oh yeah. Oh okay. All right. Okay, I know what time it is. What time it's is it? Party time. time. It's peanut butter jelly. Peanut butter jelly. Peanut butter jelly. With it. Oh no. The good is fuck around. Man, you raise to do that crazy ass dance of peanut butter. <laughs> Crump Brian Wiggins. with the banana suit. <laughs> Crump Wiggins. Peanut butter jelly with the baseball bat. There, there he go. There he go. There he go. There he go. Where he at? Where is he at? Peanut butter jelly with the baseball bat. All right. So, season two, episode 55, Good and Fuckery. Good and Fuckery! That nigga scared the shit out of me when he did that. So, was, we're going to start it all with some hometown good here in the 757. Um, Virginia native Pharrell Williams will deliver the keynote address to the North State University 107th commencement exercise, which will honor the De December graduates in the class of 2021. Just been out there. He just released That's fire. That's fire. Shout out to a Virginia legend, you know, going to a-, a, a Exclusive. Yeah, North, North of State, all right, respect. Yep, yep, yep. Now, um, I'm gonna go from one good to another fuckery. Um, Better.com CEO what fires that? 900 employees over Zoom. Better.com CEO Vishal Garge I think that's how you say his name. He, his name sounds like a supervillain. Tell you the truth. His name is oh, Vishal yeah. Garge. Vishal announced Garge. The, yep. Mm -hmm. First name V-I-S-H-A-L. Last name G-A-R-G. -G. He sounds like a Guardians of the Galaxy villain. <laughs> but uh, Vishal Garge had the gall to announce... <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> that the mortgage, the mortgage company is laying off about nine nine percent of its workforce on a Zoom webinar Wednesday, abruptly informing the more than nine hundred employees on the call that they were being terminated just before the holidays. What this is the quote. Fucking monster, bro. Mm. This is the quote he says. Hold on, 900 people you just dropped off on a webinar? I already don't yeah. like webinars because they impersonal as fuck. Like, you can't even jump in the chat and say, man, you got to text your question. And if they feel like looking at it, then they see it. Like, it, it's just very impersonal as it is. So to just fire folk like that, like, you can't even voice their opinion. It's just, it's just get the fuck up out of here, y'all. All 900 of mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. fuck shit. This, this is I how they- like it. I don't like this, this is how they did it though. The way they did it was so he, he basically said on the call, if you're on this call, you are part of the unlucky group that is being laid off. Garge said on the call, a recording of which was viewed by CNN business. Your employment here is terminated effective immediately. He then said employees could expect an email from HR detailing the benefits and severance. Yeah, this. You cold this. blooded as hell, boy. God damn, mm -hmm. Chief. It was that serious. Like it's one thing to do that. This 
companies do this all the time, but on Zoom, mm-hmm. that's, that's the equivalent of breaking up with like like sending like you might sending send out a mass text. Yeah, like or a mass email. If you are receiving this email, you have been fired. I would have rather you did that on some blind CC, so at least I'll, everybody ain't in my business and they don't know I'm. Yeah, the equivalent. Yeah, I ain't there no more. Like you ain't gotta put me out there on Front Street, bro. That's like God, that's the damn. that's like texting your wife. I want a divorce and <laughs> period. Like no, no explanation. They email the divorce papers. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. That shit was crazy. Yeah, man. And that's the fuckery. Um. Well, some some good coming up uh, is that is a petition to stop interviewing Will and Jada Pickett Smith has surpassed twenty thousand signatures. Hell no. <laughs> Pat, your dream is coming true. You did this, mm-hmm. didn't you? You did this, didn't you? Maybe. I don't know. This, this, um, is, this is a Padawan work right here. He it, just said uh, this shit like two episodes ago. I didn't think Jada and Will, if you want a conversation with Pat, you can come on the podcast and talk to him. <laughs> we ain't got no red table, though. Our table is, is black. I got a green table over here. That too. We gonna well, not this week. We just roll up green on it. Too. I'll have a green table later this week. <clears throat> you gonna support the pod? You come on here. You ain't no on the pa- pod. On a positive note for the Smith family, Will's new book is a, a it's, it's doing I good. I do want to. It's a bestseller. It. It's eighty-seven thousand copies in the I first can. week. That motherfucker is so, box book selling more than some niggas' yeah, albums. Yeah, Please. some of his out. Let me stop. I do want to read that book though. Like I've heard that is a page. Yeah, page. I actually heard it was actually a good book to read. Pretty much. So, I mean, it's Will Smith. Whatever. The only time he's stirred me wrong is in this mess, and it's not even his fault for the mess. So I'll just leave it at that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> wait. When Jada book coming out? I don't care. Uh, she already got a show. We don't need. We don't need it a no show? more. What is that? What does it come on? What, what what channel is this shit coming on? It comes on a Facebook channel. Oh hell it. no! So ain't nothing but my mama and them watching it. Interview. Now, like um, it's on um. I say it. it they That's put it on YouTube. Number, catch number YouTube clips. It's on Thriller yeah. TV. <laughs> what Thriller? Like, oh, the people that do the boxing and shit? <laughs> they did shit. It should be. It should be. But we'll talk about them later. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about them later. Um, next on the list, Drake withdraws from the 2021 Grammy Award nominations. Yeah, now I saw something about this, like, right before we got on tonight. What is that about? Well, um... Well, it looks like Alphys, it looked like um, Kanye is getting uh, is getting part of his wish because, you know, he was telling people they should just go ahead and just drop out of the, the whole nominations and just give it to him pretty much. But hey, it looks like he got part of his wish. But Drake has been on a um, in the past couple of years, he's been like basically boycotting the Grammys like he won. He um, because he got nominated for Hotline Bling, but he put it as a rap song, but he doesn't rap in the song. So he feels that they just put him in there because they didn't know where to put him because he's, or because he's black, he couldn't figure out why. And then Man. one year, he he actually got a, um, he actually got a Grammy or whatever. And um, what, he what said that Grammy year for? that, hmm? What was it? Um, Song of the Year, Artist of the Year, Best Hip Hop Album, Best Pop Album, Best Singing Album. He uh 2019, he best best rap song for God's Plan. Okay. And he had mm-hmm. what are you mad about. Well, um, up there he was basically saying he's basically 
saying that the Grammys is racist the way so they on. do things. He won the award. Walked up there and called them racist. What was it? Yeah, he, he did. He didn't straight up say racist. Okay. But he's he basically said that the way they basically judge, said the same thing Tyler created. Yeah, basically. Okay. Like he he okay. um he the way statement. they judge things and the way they uh categorize things or whatever right. is is an outdated way of doing things and we need to do something new or whatever because you basically you kind of lump every all black music into the same same genre, say category we're not a monolith on our music or our, or our culture or our personality. That's um mean, Drake right? wants to be put in the correct category so it can be shown that he's beating the motherfucker that's in their category. You feel me? Like Drake wanna be put in the R and B category because he was singing, so he wanna show that he can be R and B people. I mean, I understand it from a I wanna conquer, I wanna be the best and everything I do, don't just put me in this one category, don't humdrum me, give mm-hmm. us our our, our our correct classifications and what we're doing with our music because you put M and M in different, you put him in pop, you put him in hip hop as well. You'll do the same thing for another another culture, but when it comes to majority of the the hip hop artists is trying to cross over or just make other types of music, and they, they ain't just urban, as they say, which means black, or ain't just hip hop, which they just mean black. Put it in the mm-hmm. category so we can be seen in this genre, and it can be seen that we're actually making the money like these other people are doing. We're actually making the same achievement these other people are doing. We're actually beating these other people in their in their own game with mm-hmm. our. Crime. So, I mean, I can understand it, but at the end of the day, like, are oh, you really going to make any headway? Are you really going to make any changes with just you doing it? That's real. Well, I, I think I think it's the point, though, if, if Drake, who is arguably the biggest artist on the planet, pretty much, or whatever, says, hey, the biggest award platform for music is full of shit, then more I'm- people going to follow suit. Because I'm still following the race because I'm gonna say it ain't shit gonna change to somebody like Billy Eilish say that shit. That's true. That's true. There you That's true. But at the same she's time, some shit like that. It, ain't gonna change. They're gonna look at Drake like, okay, just another black up people. If you want to see some change there, it's too many of the good old boy networking folks. Because I mean, yeah. just on if you're trying to change something because you don't like the classification because you think it's black, look at every other struggle. We struggle by ourselves, shit don't change. We get a little participation in there for somebody you know else. Like shit starts to change. It's the fucking prestige of the BET award. Then you can win mm-hmm. your award in whatever genre you want them to make, and it'll be our shit. But we keep looking at somebody who don't understand our culture to give acceptance to some from our culture. It don't make sense. Yeah, as long as the BET awards ain't owned by Viacom, because then we're back in the same situation all over again. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I mean, I, I I feel like I feel like Drake is in the right sensibility by saying this stuff. Just the way he like says certain things, because he was saying more like, if you already won the people and they singing the songs word for word, you already won. If they're singing your singing it in your hometown, you're already winning. You know what I'm saying? Wrong. It's more like the Grammys. The Grammys are not up to date. They don't know what's going on. They're behind, whatever. Because you'll see that, like, that mix, mix, that shit ain't, ain't, for, ain't for us. That's for them. So I mean, yeah. like, me, I give two shits what the Grammy do because I don't even watch that bitch. I don't watch. I watch no award shows because me personally, I don't see the hey, the, the reason they have you. an award show. You want to highlight somebody getting they, their achievement for making money and their they talent, but you don't do that for other shit. I mean, if you're going to do this for some shit like that, that's superficial to me. Do it for some shit that people really, really, really matter. Give award shows for regular motherfucker jobs. Regular mm-hmm. other day jobs. Now you win every award. In this amount of time, we're going to bring you up here. Hey, coming up to the stage for doing the best work in the eight hour shift, Zach from Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> do some shit was- like that. I'm thinking about Drake and his best song in hour. Like, Zach. I hear on the I don't know. Fuck these celebrities. I mean, just just me personally. I mean, hey, take that woman. But I don't need to be on TV helping you celebrate your greatness. You already got the money for the shit. Now you want another award plus another bonus on top of that shit? Plus me watching you celebrate getting your shit? I don't give a fuck about you getting your award. Drake didn't come to my high school when I got my motherfucking awards. 
You know, it the funny, the ironic thing about it is the way you feel about him saying that is how I feel Drake feels about the Grammys. <laughs> on, on funny shit. Like but but at the end of the day. Oh, go ahead. No, I would say, yeah, but yeah, that's it. Pretty much. <laughs> Same. Yeah, I was just going to. Mm. Yeah. Fuck yeah. them goddamn award shows, man. <laughs> that's it. That's it. The BET, the MTV, the Oscars, the, the CMAs, the the poem, the poem, all them goddamn award shows. Fuck them all. Fuck all them goddamn award shows. That's the one I really don't understand. The poem awards. Well, you got you got awards for best anal scene, bitch. Come on, bitch, bitch. Come on, for real. hold on. Let me get back on the screen for this shit. Come on, literally, bitch. Come on, <laughs> bitch. Come best on. anal. That's a that's our awards you can win. Pun intended. And you got a you, you got a trophy for this shit, shit. Best anal, and you put it in the same shelf somebody else got with their best rap Apple, album of the year. You put both of them on the same shelf. Come on, bitch. The fuck out of here with these stupid ass superficial awards, man. Awards didn't mean shit after you out of school. Everything else, you grown. Award yourself. Your award is your money. Your award is your check. Your award is being able to do what you need to do for your fucking family. I don't even know what the fuck you're doing. You're a celebrity. I see you enough. Go somewhere. And if it's the point awards, you definitely see them enough. <laughs> That's the problem. They ain't going nowhere. They just come. But um, that's that's how they had their legs up with the hands. <laughs> this award. I mean, right. I'm, I'm this is my pretty pain. You feel me? I'm sorry to take away from the good and frugly, but fuck award shows. You feel me? Like I just don't understand them. Fuck them. Fuck award shows and fuck fuck award shows. But you can't you can't apologize for that if this is the good and fuckery because all we're saying is fuck award shows and talk about fucking awards, award shows. So like it's all part of the fuckery. This is the part where we can express fuckery. <laughs> but going forward. <laughs> Oh man, some more fuckery is debt collectors can now contact you on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can. They they can only DM you. They can't do it publicly. Well, if y'all see a DM that look funny, man, don't answer that shit. Yeah, oh, where I'm on social media, like you you. It's just treated like robocalls, those forex traders that be trying to I give you friend requests. Good, uh, it ain't the the, the porn them. site robots, the prince and princess from Nigeria that's trying to invite you to I'm some type of... I'm all my comments. Shit. If I don't know your number, I'm screening your calls. I pick up and say, we're up in a pizza if I want to. Shit. The, the car pay. warranty. Yes, I had my phone forwarded and all my calls went right to Pizza Hut in Petersburg. So, mm. If you ever went to Petersburg, somebody called looking for face. My bad. <laughs> Can I get a pepperoni? Wow. <laughs> okay. But man, I I just wanted to put that out there, man. If you start seeing them like Yo, people trying to just this has got do conversations. Like, how do you pass like legislation to stop robocalls, but then you allow this? Like it's like an ever ending story of like, hey, we're gonna keep calling you. And what is the purpose of the debt? Like, you're not coming to actually collect anything. So if I did not have it when you called last, what <coughs> makes you think that if I'll I explain had it to you. now that I would have oh, like, I you think face call got me it. right now? I'm either gonna pay you or I was about to say either have it or I don't. I think well, face got it. as a former debt collector myself. <laughs> I'll explain why why they why we used to do that. Um, the point of the continuous calls is at a certain point legally, if we don't, they have no precedence on it. If it's like you you trying to follow up on something that that's yours, and if you know somebody can actually get away with it. Um, as far as just for like credit, 
change my number. If you change on your number, then people can't contact you and your debt go for seven years. In some states, you don't owe that debt no more. So that's why people are persistent on calling. Some people do third parties and they get somebody else to call you for the company I used to work with. I used to call the other place. My man, call this number for me now. They answer for you. They don't know your number. And once you pick up the phone, uh, we got you. Because once we sell your shit, if we can prove that we called you, you have no claims in none of your property no more. Because we have we've done our due diligence. But if we never called and on no record it shows a call, legally we're liable for that. So that's why they have to certain companies have to make those certain calls and and by, by so many weeks. But for some companies, you only get the calls for up to 50 something days um after the debt becomes delinquent. And then they may stop calling you all of a sudden. And then you get a phone call from a different company because that company has already went to their limits to try to do it. Now they have sold your debt to another company, which in some places, some cases, you can get just some other conversations with selling your debt. That ain't right either. So, but the reason why they follow up on so many calls says like property management, say you rented some shit or something like that is because they come in for their shit after them calls stop or they gonna sell your shit after them calls stop. They just give you so many calls to try to give you a chance to actually say, well, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that. And most business like as long as you tell them, I'm trying to, or you get them some type of story, put them to put notes in, all they want is something to type in. You feel me? Like, we don't, mm-hmm. I, I never want to call people like that. You got to get on my nerve. I used to see the same number. I'm like, hey, I ain't going to call this person two days ago. Fuck, I don't want to call this motherfucker person. Shit. But I got to pick the phone number. Hey, how you doing? This? And that's just it. So. But it's, it was even more annoying for me when I when I was a bill collector and bill collectors was calling me. So, so the advice you would give to our listeners would be to pick up the phone if the debt collector call and just tell them something. At least talk to them. Yeah, if people calling you, man, bill collectors calling you, just pick up the phone one time. Just tell them, look, man, I ain't got it right now. They gonna try to offer you to make a payment then. Look, I ain't got it right now. And all, all honesty, with most bills, as long as you give them at least five dollars, they'll leave the fuck alone. <laughs> Set up a payment plan for five dollars if y'all want to, man. Take it from face, man. I can tell you how you get passing bills and shit as a bill collector and as a <laughs> just me, because I got bills too. So, um, I get past my own. So, well, you heard it here first, folks. As a former oh. debt collector, if I was calling you and I needed your money, um, if I offered you an arrangement. The best thing we do is that, yeah, I would like an arrangement and just talk the arrangement out to get the best suit, best suited to you on your basis. Because at no point or is the company willing to just like not get no money from you. As long as you're paying something continuously, they're like, all right, you can get give a company two dollars a month or I can afford two dollars a month. I ain't got no money, I'm broke. Well, can you do 25? No, I can do two. Okay, sir. Well, we will be taking the money on this day. Cool. Well, that I went think, from a joke to a little bit more, pay a little bit more, pay a little bit more. But you got to pay something. You can't dodge debt forever. I, please believe me. Yeah. But you can. You can. You can. Like I just said, seven years and you know, but hey, give me some hope. seven years. You know, like to, to successfully dodge all your debt, well, you go seven years. You will have to change a bunch of shit. You change your phone number, change your address because if it's a previous address and you move back to the previous address, please believe me, they will find your Information. Nigga, if your information is in, in, in debt, any data system, bill collectors can and will find your shit. You'd be surprised the technology and the shit is at their fingertips to get to you. So they call, they answer me. I give you two dollars a month. Man. Two um, for that. I, I'll add on to this. Um, along with that, is social media, and you know those people with the PPP loans that you know you're doing your your money um your money phones and stuff they looking at that if you flossing real hard or taking some trips on your instagram they're looking at that and Only it's provisional just, property mm-hmm. and it's just going to be just like the homie that sees you on the vacation and you owe them money they're going to hit you up just like that so just like the hip-hop police listen to listen in the lyrics they're hip. They're hip hop policing with debt, pretty much. You on the beach and you owe me money, man. Give me this goddamn time. <clears throat> Give me this little stick. Shit. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, speaking of hip hop and policing, and uh, <laughs> in general, I guess it's time we will get into the versus part of the good and fuckery, y'all, man. Bone Thugs yeah. and Harmony versus Three Whoa! Six Mafia. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
best verses ever. And I said it, and I don't care what nobody else thinks. I said it. Best verses ever. This shit had me about to throw up a table through the wall. I was in here about to drop, kick the garage door. Like, I had my wife scared because I had the headphones on. So she just see me wilding, but she don't hear me. I, I was scared for her. When... Oh, man. <laughs> You said you about to fight somebody because they were it playing something. I was like, it real, man. I was I about to it. headbutt through the drywall. It was about to get real in here, bro. <clears throat> that was the best verses ever, man. So, um, reaction. You seen it yet, Pace? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, predictions. Who? Did, well, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I, just, I was going with 3-6 anyway or whatever. I had predicted 3-6 to win. I, I, I'm just, you know, we all know why it's in between us, but for the people that don't know, pretty much, 3-6 reigns supreme in our college years here in Virginia, from the 804 to the 700 to the D.C. I don't know, maybe Rowan Oak, too. Yeah. God damn. Reign supreme. Niggas was raging off 3-6 from high school all the way through college. Like, that was just the red. Like, you want to beat somebody ass? You want to get fucked up? You want to wild Everything. out? They was the soundtrack you needed, man. Like, they were, they was going to hit no matter what. Them and Lil John, yo. And mm -hmm. Troy, are you, you yeah. going to get some, you know, you going to get active that evening. Okay. Um, well, this, yeah. This this definitely was a good one, man. It's just like, and I would say what? they had most guests. They had like, I don't know, man. It just felt like it was all around the suspense. Like what you was expecting to happen in the Jeezy and Gucci happened here. Like who did y'all have winning? <laughs> Me, it was three six. I was, I went in three six. Okay. Just because I like three six like that. You went in with three six and you came out with three six. Went in three six, went in, came out three six. I was just okay. three six all the way. What about you, Faith? <clears throat> um, nigga, I'm from NATO Do <laughs> You see me in high school, middle school. I throw them bowls. I, I like to harmonize as well sometimes, but you can't put up. Boom, 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 boom to tell the club, nigga, tell the club. You cannot. No, I'd rather I think tell the club. That was the story of the evening. I think it was the energy, bro. Like, uh -huh. if you go on paper, right, now, if you look at it on paper, Bone Thug had as many hits as 3 6. Like, they was pretty even in that. But it was the energy of Bone Song <clears> followed <throat> by the energy of 3 6 song. And the energy was just, man, yo. They man, started a man, fight. Man, yo, three six. We man. running, man. We running. We when running. They, when they started the night off, though, with tie the club up, nigga, tie the club. I was like, oh, oh we starting off already with a nigga ass. Okay, <laughs> okay. Like I knew from the jump before the bottle, before we get to the the the, the incident, the fuckery. I knew some shit was gonna jump off. I was like, oh, we starting on this end. Like, this is where we starting. So I'm like, okay, so I know what cat what part of the catalog y'all bring it out now, because that means y'all going up from here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now mind you, mind you, face could still lean on the bone thugs way because bone thugs is a smoker stoner music, also. I ain't gonna lie. But. I was definitely into the bone thugs too. Like it was, it was a, it was a full night of just like it was, it was like a dream concert type shit for me. Like, you know how at wrestling they got dream matches and shit. Like, yeah, it was like a dream matchup for like uh, hip hop for me. Like, it was just two groups that like I, it really like no matter who I had winning. They both would have won to me anyway. Yeah, I, I rock with them both so hard. Like the fans won. Yeah, they could have. They ain't even had to perform. They could have just pushed play on the <clears> albums, and I would have just sat in this bitch and just snapped. So they already had me, but I definitely had uh, three six. It was the energy, man. Like I think in these verses, people got to start thinking about for one who they're gonna go up against as far as like who energy match. Like you might not do mm -hmm. the same exact. <clears throat> 
topic matter, but you want the energy to match. Like Soldier Boy might have been talking about shooting a gun. Bow Wow might have been talking about kissing a girl, but their energies the energy. match. You feel me? Like it was a similar vibe all night. With Bone Thugs, it's so smooth. Some of their shit, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that juxtaposition just makes it look bad. You know, it what just I mean? it 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 does feel it did feel weird when like, I feel like Bone you Thugs should have won against Shaka Khan. You said what? Bone Thugs should have won against Shaka Khan. Oh, this guy, this guy. But it, it did well, feel folks, weird. We had a really good show this evening, man. It it did feel weird not. when you, you, you getting it's off that height. The fire to the limit through the wall. <laughs> Damn. And I miss my uncle George. Oh, she just God. had a um a versus, I believe. Now that now that I think about it, Shaka Khan. But but back to the story at hand. Um, it's crucial conflict. <laughs> True, but um, dang, that dude be so off. But it, it did feel weird. Tony that, uh, no. What's the nigga Tony? What's the nigga from the uh, Terror Squad? Tony Sunshine. Tony Sunshine. Oh God. No, I love a- my desert ego. Yeah, we were. <laughs> my shirt drink out every day. <laughs> hey, hey. But. Yeah, it, it feel weird when you get off the heightness of like ass and titties and then next thing you know, they start singing like Days of Our Lives or those- This is the ex- funniest oh, part, yo. Days of our lives. The niggas came off, okay, okay. We ain't got to it yet, but let's talk about it. After the bottle throw, after the, the, the scuffle, kerfuffle fight, how do you come back on stage and go straight into ass and titties, yo? That was the funniest shit to me. <laughs> Like, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, thank so you. We go from let's whoop a nigga ass to okay. I'm some ass and titties now. Well, it was, hey, it was just such a sw- isn't swift that real life? Isn't that what you want in real life? You know, they well, they said this was like I, this was kind know. of a mismatch because of the vibes and everything, but they mm-hmm. actually got history with each other. Like it was a point mm-hmm. where they were beefing and they had like ten or whatever. So this it's is kind of like like I said kind of. earlier, like G- Jeezy and Gucci. Or whatever, where well, we have the verses as the new Switzerland for hip hop, where Busy Bone need to stay off that narcotic. Hey, hey, before we even get started, you ugly motherfuckers ain't finna be mocking me while I'm on motherfucking stage, like straight the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Is what is what it is. It's what Gangsta Boo said. Yes, she said a lot. Now you had Jeezy and them dissing dead homies and shit, and now one person threw a blow. Uh-uh. This nigga m- was imitating you while you were on stage in a versus battle and you threw a bottle? Get off that <laughs> shit, man. Leave that booger shit alone, bro. I hate to say I this, but Busy Bone did some very stereotypical light skin shit that day. He almost ruined <clears throat> the whole damn shit. He almost ruined the best I- thing ever because he wanted to get mad and have an ego. Nigga, fuck out now, of here, man. You look crazy as hell on some of that shit after them niggas just mm-hmm. throw the club up and then you come over there singing like you on the street corner with a bottle of wine and a and a barrel with a fire in it. Looking like mm-hmm. Gerald Laverne the intro of New Jack City. Living just I will, I'll, I'll give Busy, I'm going to give Busy his props. <laughs> Just enough for the city. <laughs> this guy. Mm-hmm. But I will give Busy his props. Like him, <laughs> him and Crazy, they like both, like they knew their lyrics, like, like clockwork. Like they, 
Like when they needed busy to say his lines or whatever, they just got him. They pressed the button. They went off or whatever. He did what he had to do, and then they got him. But going back to that situation, man, like, man. yeah, he did some stereotypical light skin shit. That, the fact hey, yo. Hey, hey, yo. Hey, hey, before we even get started, you ugly motherfuckers ain't finna be mocking me while I'm on motherfucking stage. Like, straight the fuck up. Nigga, suck my dick. And gangsta boo. He was the first one in like one of the first like, ones. Paul, if you don't get your little arm up, man, if you don't get up out of there with that. That's strong. Paul said he got that one hit of quitter. That one hit of quitter. Don't you throw that little motherfucker no more. This my strong hand. Grab my strong hand. <laughs> said he got that one hit of quitter. in there fight. Oh, you know what? You know what? DJ Paul, like Fat Joe, straight up asked him in the recap, like, oh, Paul, um, <laughs> I, now I don't know the whatever the scientific way of saying it, man. Look, man, you only got one arm, and you're the first one punching. Like that's what Fat Joe said. Can't like, gangsta, DJ Paul said, you know, you know, you know, I understand, but I come from. He like he comes with logic of when God takes something away from you, He gives you a strong hands, you. two knuckles that you can hammer the <laughs> shit out of nigga with. <laughs> like, and he said he's been known in high. He said in high school they already know I got that one hit of quitter, or whatever. And that, he he tested it that night. He tested it that night, man. I, I will say though, so, so the fuck <clears throat> when the shit jumped off, dudes it looked like. Uh, 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 I got on this thriller jacket. Like, oh, first, first of all, I want to say this: Juicy J looked like a straight up like James Bond action figures, like action you hero. No, the and cool outfits, Juicy J tanks. DJ Paul looked like like a super villain. DJ Paul looked like the Black Boss villain and Fatal Fury. It was like <laughs> he looked, he looked like the stereotypical Black Boss. That you, see, <laughs> that you see like Def J Vendetta. <laughs> I thought that he's straight he was to bust out with some choreography or something. I thought he was gonna give me some Jackie Wilson moves. And they was gonna throw the cape around him and bring him back on stage. I, <clears> I, I, I didn't know what was happening with his outfit. No, but that he shit was, like he was that's ice skate more than perform, but God bless. Yeah, ugly motherfuckers ain't gonna be mocking me while I'm up here doing my thing. <laughs> and then, and then Juicy J responded, "What's up, my dick?" And then he threw the mic. Now, then that's I will my say, dick. Now I will say, you you can't do I, that. anytime, anytime, depending on the person, whoever you are, whoever they, how they bring, um, how however they were brought up or whatever. Some people may be able to take that and just respond with another witty retort, but in man law, not in public. When you invite you someone, not that way. Like, in, like that's like what law. you say to somebody when you are like at the point of like, I have no respect for you. Like, mm -hmm. even if you argue with somebody, like, or you don't like somebody, like you could have said a bunch of other shit, but you went straight to damn. Uh, well, that's Juicy J, man. And I, I can see Juicy J just saying that without like him like thinking too much about it. As soon as he said it and stepped into the middle, I was like, oh, son, that yellow, <clears throat> that yellow tape about to get broken right now. And it did. And it did. It did. Country Black started running in. And, 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 you know and Gangsta to catch a body for everybody. And, and Gangsta Boo was just talking mash. Like, you know. Gangsta Boo was the funniest person of the show. She was the like the the MC. Cause she was like sliding, oh, you go do that to a girl. I, she was talking cash shit. Mm-hmm. Too much cash shit. 
too much cash shit. But all in all, Best I feel like versus ever though. The, 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 can we talk about the gift? Yeah, that's. That's what I'm about to get into the flow of the guests, how strategically they put the guests together, or whatever, like back to back. Like it started off well, well, the first surprise guest was Busy Bone because nobody Indeed. thought Busy Indeed. Bone was going to be there. Like, so he was the first surprise guest. <laughs> that was definitely the first shock of the night because I did not expect it. The next one was Lil Flip, Ride the Spinners. Yes. yes, I wasn't mad at it either. Like, even though it's <clears> a <throat> His his raps don't age very well, but <laughs> what I will say is I enjoy seeing him. Like I, it, it's he's been away long enough that I was able to miss him. I was like, Kate, oh, yeah. Fuck, yeah, flipper. <clears throat> it got me hyped. No. I was like, okay, we gonna have one of these tonight. All right, we bringing out the big. Guys. Even he like did a like a little freestyle at the end. I was like, yeah, you know what, flip. Yeah, that was hard. And I, me, I was on the Ti side of a little flipping Ti beef. So absolutely. But that verse he did that night, it was actually all right. Well, so that was Ryder Spinners. The the next guest was uh Lil Easy. For the love of Monday. And that had to been that had to been hard. crazy. That was that was the that, point when I started spazzing. Cause it was like boom, then boom. <clears throat> and then you was like, yeah, just wait. There's more. And I was like, where where are you gonna go from having Lil Easy perform his dad's lyrics like that and killing that shit? Mm-hmm. And then it's just the simple fact they're in Cali. So you're in Cali, you're in your hometown, you're the son of Easy E. You're doing your dad's lyrics, pretty much, with the with the group that your dad put on. Yeah, it was that was a that was a big moment. That that had to be one big of the moment. greatest experiences for, for, uh, for a lot of ever. Them, yeah. So next, Chameleon there comes out riding dirty. This um, comes Chame out of his tech bubble somewhere in Silicon Valley and pops up. Mm -hmm. Who's seen him in years? Mm -hmm. And he flowed his rhyme perfectly. Flawlessly. Like like he just laid it down yesterday. Yes, after did. after doing a major tech deal, he came in on the verses. <laughs> came in rich as fuck. And Straight from Silicon Valley, and then and then Crazy Bone came in and killed his. Like Crazy Bone killed it every single time. Man, well, Crazy Bone has always been my favorite anyway. I think Lazy Bone was mine. Like, I think. Crazy can flow his ass <clears> off, <throat> and the tone of his voice make everything he say sound cool as fuck. Mm -hmm. We're in this round. <laughs> yep. break, break down. So they counter. Let break break down. 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 Then they <laughs> count. And Juicy J come out. When Juicy J come out, he brings the strippers. He brings the bag for the money. Strippers. <clears throat> and um, Mike Wills. Ripples. And Lil Wayne comes out. Yeah. Now this is this is what blew the house off because I did not expect Recluse Wayne to come out. Nobody could like I was like they actually the one got moment when I wasn't out like his jumping face. around or nothing. I was just sitting there like they got this nigga out of the house. Can you imagine how much they had to pay this nigga to get him out of the house? Mm. Well, what they said, uh, well, and I then know, he was slick with it, like everybody else was standing up on the stage, kind of hanging. That nigga came out there, this verse gave his dap and took the pictures and walked the fuck on. Now, they <laughs> say they say Lil Wayne did that. Well, Juicy J, he said in it that uh, Lil Wayne said that you know what, if it was anybody else, I wouldn't think about it, but for you, Juice, because they known each other for a long time since he was a kid, uh, evidently, that he came right on out. So that's, that's actually. That's, that's pretty big. So he came out. So what do they do, Bone, to counter that? They bring out Le John. 
and it went up a notch. And then I wanted to throw the TV out the door. That's it went it up got, a it notch. It got ugly in here after that. Like from there, the rest of the show, it was ugly. I was like, boy, it so was much all shit almost up got notch. broke that, that night, boy. It was bad. I ain't already been up. Since, since we was like 20 some champs. What? <laughs> yeah. Boy, it was a, a web, a web jam night. Up in here. Mm. Like, no, matter of fact, face. I don't know if you remember. House of Blue. Back, it was like the Civic Center. Mm. Like just rowdy and just, ah. Oh, like it was ugly in here. <clears throat> Speaking of rowdy, and, oh, next person to pop out Project Pat. Yeah. And he came out tonight. Talk. Oh, man. I wish they had just went into uh, the streets and let him finish his whole verse. Mm-hmm. That verse is so hard to me, yo. Oh my god! I gotta go nah, the streets. I'm supposed to go to the streets. It's too bad. So I wanna, I wanna say, Project Pat looked mad clean that night, man. Oh, yeah. Like P- Project Pat, he, oh, he, he, up. he got his teeth fixed and everything. Teeth fixed. Right like, he don't look crazy. He oh, look you like. You seen him on Vlad? I haven't. I don't really. He got some Vlad interviews that came out before this drop. So I had seen him already, but yeah, he, he came out looking like a fucking Gucci man. Man, he tall as a big ass. Like, he looked clean. Yeah, like, he like, looked like somebody's security guard. I thought it was security. He ain't got his health together. <laughs> Project Pet, huh? Project Pet got his like, health Like, he don't look overweight or nothing. He, he look. We be on some twink. He got his health together. Get found. Stank it. Stank it. Like, Project Pat, when he came out, was fat. When Chick- this dude looked like he, back, he hit the back. gym. Big diamond rings on my pike and pike and oh, now, it. Oh, Pike it. Oh, now, it fall in this my hobby. You know what's crazy about 3 6? Their guests bring out guests. So their guest project pack Boy, brings this out the one. I, I would <laughs> never guess we would have seen. We had everybody on the on the stage from the original 3 6 except for uh, Lord. That shit was mm-hmm. epic as fuck. Cause I don't consider Kuta Niga like one of the originals. Like I consider him an mm. all over the years, but that was epic as fuck. Mm. The whole three six all on stage together, cool, chilling, like, cause you know they done had a turmoil in, in a turmoil for the past few years. That's true. That is true. I, I, that, is. That, that, I don't know if they know how epic it was for a brother like me, but yeah. No, nah, they they know they sound like they had more fun. They sounded like the fans when you when I heard the um interview behind it pretty much. So after this, after this, Bone had to hit him with a nuclear missile. And it was thuggish, ruggish, bone. And they brought out Shatasha Williams. And mm. Tasha Cleveland definitely in the house. Boy. I ain't heard from Tasha since the original music video. I ain't seen okay. her nothing since the original music video. Back in, what was that, 92, 93? Mm-hmm. When she came out, I was like, hold on. I was like, I got Tasha! <laughs> <laughs> they win. They win. Because I know it was. she was the hardest to find. Yeah. Boy, that was. I know it. Thank you, Bone Thugs. You did right by that. You you could you had to bring her out for that song. Cause she makes that song. Like they do their thing on it. But if you took all of their verses and just compressed just her stuff together, I would listen to that on repeat. Like she yeah. crushed that song. She sung yeah. the fuck out of that thuggish ruggish bone, goddammit. Yeah, like that's one of those songs that you can always remember. Like that's one of them songs that you you'll remember and in like in normal conversation you'll like use that as a joke or something or something oh, like that. Just, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it that's how that's how it. common the show Lazy, that that um song is. Which is in the house? Which is in the house? And play. 
and Tasha, <laughs> Cleveland, definitely in the house. All she was doing is singing people's names and but saying they were in the house, gone. but but that shit go hard. Than, that was God a lot damn, Tasha, from all these songs. And she sounded just like the original track. So well, 20 some odd years thing. later, 30 years later. Well, if you ain't saying nothing since then, you should. This nigga face. Shit, be real. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> it's the part of this podcast, nigga. We real. <laughs> you got a point, man. You got a point. You got a point. Shit. What other Natasha? Who in the hell else you heard her sing something instead of Thugger Rogan Bone? Never. Again, I ain't heard from her since the original. Her voice better be the exact same. When it premiered, mm. that was the last time I saw Tasha. Mm. From then, mm. it was just Bone Thug. And, and what funny is, when, she, when they first came out, I thought her, she was Harmony. I thought they was Bone Thug <laughs> and she was Harmony and they was all one big group. So when they first came out and Makes I first sense. saw the original video, I'm sitting at home. I think I thought kid. of that too. I'm sitting at home as a 10 year old kid looking at the TV like, oh damn, oh, that's, that's gonna be a dope ass group right here. They got her killing the vocals. These niggas can rap their ass off. The fast rap wasn't like, like it was like them and DOS effects at the time. And not really a lot of people was doing that at that fast. So it was like new kind of and fresh. I was like, this gonna go no, out. Was then everything else after that ain't have her on it. No, I was like, damn, so how they both thug the harmony and just kicked harmony out the group. How many now, my dumb ass heard her say, and Tasha, but I just assumed that her like thug name was Harmony. Like they was bone thug. <laughs> they was really with boy. I was a yeah, yeah, it was bad. Her street name is Harmony. That, man, you know, because that's what she bring to the group. You know what I'm saying? She bring the harmony to the group with her vocals. You know what I'm saying? And she even them out. Like you got the streets. You got her coming yeah, with the soft vocals, that thing. You mix them together. That's the harmony. You see, like harmony grits. And she's the harmony. I'm joking. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next guest, Crunky Dead, Crunky Dead, Crunky. Yo, Deuce, I ain't gonna even front, yo. Deuce was going in. Yeah, he, he would had, dance his ass off. He was killing that shit. My wife was looking at me like, "The fuck are you in here doing?" I'm in here. I'm in here. Like, I didn't even remember the dude's name until like, he said it in the in the chat. Boy, I was <clears throat> loose. You were old man. You was my oldest refuge, man, because my wife was in here looking at me like, because mind you, all she sees, she don't hear nothing. All she sees is this. <laughs> for the for the pod squatters out there, that's also what we saw when we went out <laughs> with him to the clubs in our college years. I don't remember that shit. I'll be real. I don't, I don't remember a lot of them party. I had a he don't remember back. that because he was smoking. And no. I was That's, drinking heavy back then, too. It, it, drinking. We was a doing lot. a lot back then. Um, Wrist crap. That made nights not too. that memorable. I was doing all that shit. Oh, that, too. The little one in the crowd. Oh, oh, oh the cocaine acro days. Yeah. There was a lot that was the color of my acro. White. Yeah, y'all don't get that confused. Won't nobody doing the cocaine. No, it was just the color of the acro. No, it was just liquor and weed. Ain't no sniffles around. There was a lot of other stuff <laughs> outside of that going on. A lot. I enjoyed parties and back, getting in even. Back rooms at people's parties and shit. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And in these parties, we, they played three six. <laughs> a lot of people got their ass scooted across the floor. Mm -hmm. and, I was, and I was slim back then. I was like maybe a buck sixty. So you know, everybody would underestimate all us because we come in all slim and we ain't got nobody like really tall and, and shit like that. But Chewy, and then next thing you know, 
<laughs> you got big football players that shit getting swept off they fucking feet. Get your ass off. I bet you won't. Get your ass off. Get him. Get your ass off me. Get, him. get the fuck out of here. I, I bet remember, you won't. I remember more fights started off that. And it wasn't because like niggas was trying to try other people. It was because they would get mad because they couldn't move me and then they would fall or something and then they would get up and get pissed like, dude, like, dude nigga, we're all pushing. It's just, I have a very solid foundation and I have I know leverage. So if you come over here to push me, I'm going to put you on the floor. I'm sorry. I, I Strengthen your leg? No, hit, don't, don't skip leg day? I don't know, nigga. <laughs> but hey, I bet you won't. Oh, yo, don't bet me. I won't hit a motherfucker. Yes, I will. No, that that was a good bet. Um, that was that was a good bet. It, I think I actually bet it on him one time. I enjoy. I I, I thoroughly. I, it's I weird. I, I don't I like the shit that comes around with it, but I thoroughly enjoy fights. Like it's just fun. Like, I used no. to go out and, like, even if I was going to chill, I'd be like, I need to get into some shit. I need to get into some shit that I can get off. I know, you're and, Goku. And, 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 and the good part is I always wrote, we always had Chewy with us. So I was like, well, if I don't do it, I know before the end of the night, he's going to Goku and Vegeta. So one of us going to have to, you know, call in the cavalry and we're going to get the whistle from that ass. And it didn't fail me many times. And the funny part would be you would go straight from like whipping people's ass and then you go like to like an after party and be in there getting it in on another type of level. Fighting the fuck. And that was her day. It was a very, yeah, it was a very weird time. But that was her day. Taking that shit, I was the, I was always. It wasn't her day. Just every time they went out, not her day. But. Hence why the next person to, uh, graduate from college from the age of 17 all the way to the age of 32, bro. Mm. No, actually, 34. Yeah, you got it, though. It took me about five, six of those colleges to... Mm. I keep doing the face smile. I figure if I do that after everything, you know, <laughs> Uh, what I was going to say, because I know it's going to get late too. But um, speaking of Air Day, Wiz Khalifa also came out. <laughs> this nigga in his, in his Maybelline model smile. I didn't care for the uh, Wiz Khalifa part. I'm be honest with you. I, I didn't really care about that song. I didn't care about his verse on it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, yeah, but I don't no, have nothing that's... else to say about it. Wiz Khalifa's uh, Juicy J new nephew, so they came out. But I got the Taylor but, Gang, you know, connection. But yeah. the person, the, the the main people that came out is the next few people I'm talking about. Stay Fly came on, and then it was then Young Buck came out, and Eight Ball and MJG. And I don't give a fuck about Young Buck, but Yo. Eight Ball and Yo. MJG. Yo. Now at this point, this is when it started to get into like head button drywall about to run out the garage door while it's closed type shit. At this point, I'm in here about to flip this table, dude. Like it was getting horribly ugly in this house. Like I was in this bitch wilding. Still with the headphones on, completely silent to the outside world, but acting a donkey. Oh my God, when that nigga MJG came in, they both MJG. Oh my God, nigga! In the morning, when I need her, oh! it's like that verse right there gets you charged up. Like I can feel like the power rising in me, and like, come ah! Oh man, dude, dude! If if there was ever a such thing as like a human being being able to throw a fireball, I would have did it right there. It would it would have shot. I've been my, trying. My cheap, my cheap would have been that electrified. Like I was in this bitch losing it, bro. Losing it, man. That was like my crunk dream, man. Crunk ain't dead. Crunk ain't dead. Crunk ain't dead. And that was like a crunk man's dream. Like I had like the crunk all stars on stage, all mm-hmm. in one evening. And it was, then it was amazing. All right, 
mind you, I don't care about this. I don't care about this song. I really don't even care about this appearance. But just the audacity of having this person come out and perform this was the money. nail in the coffin to me. But money? when Terrence freaking Howard came out and he perfect, perfectly, like perfectly, I said that. I said that all wrong. It's late. It is late. Perfectly, nigga. I can't say it wrong. Add that to your lexicon. Perfectly, nigga. But perfectly just recited the whole song. Words and I did like out the blue. Like, I was not expecting that at all. So I was like, you know, they had the audacity to actually bring this dude out. And <laughs> did the song. They, yeah. My this, eyes have seen a lot of things in the street. <laughs> this verse is show every aspect of 3 6 you could possibly get. That nigga brought out Lucy's life. <clears throat> but, DJ. Mike, DJ. You know they had to perform the Oscar winning hit. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I want to say this though. Um, we I want to give props to Lazy Bone because he perfectly hosted and like segued throughout the whole um verses. It seems like if if they got hit with something with three six, he had like a perfect segue to go to the next one. Even if the song wasn't the song that hit at that moment, he had like that perfect segue to go to it. Like Gangsta Boo came out with where them dollars at where them dollars at and then he said something and next thing you know we got to get that paper 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 like he he really showed his showmanship and the way he keep like just kept the show going pretty much at, at the same time when wishbone would scream out randomly hey y'all we're just trying to keep the peace that wasn't us y'all he would just be so random loud one person to be there yeah, you know, exactly. People don't, people don't often think <clears throat> about Wish, so he was just, you know, glad people were coming mm-hmm. in the festivities. True. Well, another person people don't often think about, but really wanted to get some attention. I wish he would shut up the whole time. Young Buck. Young Buck would not shut up from the time he came out to afterwards. He was just talking like it was his show. Just probably realized that <laughs> this is the only verses he's ever going to actually achieve or get to. So he just kept saying it over and over and over again. I got to tell you something, young buck. You haven't got your street points yet. I'm not the most street gangster person in the world to say that. But according to other street gangster people, (laughs) or whatever, you haven't had your points yet to be doing that bragging. That much bragging on somebody else's show that you're the guest on? And you only got one verse up there? Really? And then you kept talking. And then they... They brought a little flip out the freestyle. Little, little flip out freestyles you because you say some old garbage crap at the end, pretty much. So you did all that talking and you would think somebody that would do all that talking will at least show out when it's when they give you another chance to shine. Not Young Buck. Not Young Buck. Whatever. So Young Buck, shut up. It wasn't your version. It wasn't. It really wasn't. So you saying you really don't care for Young Buck or? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta understand Fifty Cent. I kind of understand. <laughs> at this point, I understand. He just would not shut up at all. You gonna make Young Buck <laughs> cry? You know he prone to shed a tear. They, they didn't even put his mic on. They didn't even put like a lot of the guest mics on all the way. Like, like I would say maybe Lazy, Busy Bone, or um, DJ Paul or Juicy J or whatever. We but even with lazy. his mic. <laughs> but I would say even with, with his mic off, Young Buck was still talking junk in the background. Like, why? Why? And that was the fuck of the verse. Was happy to be there. I'm, it, well, it was obvious because he surely said every he surely 
I can't even talk. I can't talk, but he could talk. He could talk all through that day. Like, I'm glad they ain't brought him out early. Man. He was just happy to be included, man. Uh, yeah, because he hasn't been somebody included. paid attention to Buck, man. Yeah, because they ex- like, oh, they it. like me again. No, we don't. The transsexual ain't ruined it. No, nah, they, nah, nah, they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> well, it actually, was it just wasn't. The camera tra- angle, Pat. It wasn't the transsexual. It was you that chose. Like, <laughs> it did the same. That, that's who really. But nobody, mm-mm. Nah. Nah. Mm-mm. And yeah, and that souls and the good and fuckery, y'all. <laughs> Fuck man. Fuck man. Fuck man. Fuck man. I think that's a beautiful place to uh end off episode five five, the junior say our edition. Um my sports fans don't feel me on that. Um yeah, man. We got the black business this week. No new ones. Well, not yet. Face, tell them about a good black business that they can always support. Well, a couple of days ago, I heard about this great one. It's online. It's Ooh, called artreclothing.com. Oh, that's right. That's the store. <laughs> My bad. Artreclothing.com, man. Artreclothing.com. A R T R E. Clothing. We'll never spell clothing for you. Dot com. A R T R E. Clothing.com. New styles and designs every week. Um, Patty Hendricks coming out this week. Flu Monkey came out a couple of weeks ago. Um, copy Flu Monkey gear, copy our trade gear, copy our partner's merchandise. Um, we got everything from phone cases to hats, um, hoodies, long sleeves, short sleeves, garment bags. We even got partner, um, partner's pockets, pullovers. Patty Hendricks right there coming out soon. Um, we got socks. We got a little bit of everything for you, man. You want to support? Please go check us out. Um, promo code Christmas coming up, R Trade One, A R T R E number one. Promo code right now. The only one I'm giving you. Help us out. AC hey, 83. You know that's the AC 83, R Trade Clothing. Thank y'all for listening. Indeed, man. And um, on top of that, if you want to support financially, you can always, you know, hit us out with a cash app at Partner Tears One. That's dollar sign, partner tears one. Or you can go to buymeacoffee.com and sign up for a subscription to our membership where you will get exclusive perks, um, promo codes to rtrayclothing.com that nobody else will get. You will get exclusive members-only events and access to our Discord that only you will have access to. Um, You will get unedited episodes of every podcast. And you will get special upcoming 